Okay, hi there. Listen, I am feeling good this morning, and uh, that's a good thing. So here's the thing about it, is that we're dealing with emotions and acting. Now, if we're going to deal with emotions and acting, then we need to be able to expand our emotional range, right? So there's this thing in acting that's called um, self-activating emotion. Some people call it emotional preparation. Some people call it um, just riling yourself up or getting your blood boiling and being able to hit that emotional core, right? Now, what you're really looking to do is you're looking to be able to fulfill what the writer's actually given you to do, which is to be able to, to literally um, activate, self-activate an emotional range. So I know, and I'm going to work with some materials and, and, and we'll go through it, where there's like eight main emotions. And that's the wide, wide, wide brushstroke for actors to know that there's eight main emotions. And a lot of actors only work with two or three emotions, sometimes only six their entire career. So this is, 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 is very, just it's exactly, it's, it takes a lot of work to be able to build out your emotional range. This takes a ton of work sometimes. And it depends. Some Sometimes you might have a very, very, very simple inclination, right? You might have a life experience that you're able to get a very access readily, like two or three emotions. And then it might be very difficult to get the fourth and the fifth emotion. But I suggest to everybody that you've got at least five, six, ten different emotions. You want to be able to keep expanding that emotional range. Right. So expand your emotional preparation. So you're not only working with one emotional color and, you know, that one emotional color. That's when you're a one note actor, a one note actor could there's there's two different things that a one note actor is. One is a one note actor is somebody that only worked with one emotional range and a one note actor is two somebody that doesn't receive the other actor. Is it somebody that that um, they they're only. Um, uh, self-driven, um, they don't have any receiving of the other person. So this brings us to a very, very, very quick, quick point. And that is the reason why I've done this emotions list is to be able to help you to be able to define your emotional range, right? As an actor or your emotional preparation, right? You are doing your emotional preparation. Now, a lot of things that are missed is the activation or the self-activation of emotion. And this is what I'm focusing on here to be able to help because this is key. Now I've seen, oh, well over, well over 30,000 acting exercises. It's not, this, my opinion is not coming from nowhere. It's coming from a lot of places, believe me. So the, the reality to this is that, that the more you're able to expand your emotional range, the more you will be able to have an expanded talent as an actor. That's exactly what this is. There's just no other way around it. So look, let's get this thing started. This is the, the poster for today. Updated emotions list. It's 1,200 emotions list. Please check out the programs listed and the color tint glasses. I've got an acting activities workshop there. That's fantastic. Um, that's a, 110 classes which is uh, over, it's over 1,100 different acting activities that you can do. And if you're bored and you just don't even do acting, you can still use that as something to do. They're very good activities. And there's a, a book, Emotional Preparation, which you can get on my website. And um, uh, what else? We got acting relationships. I got a relationships list. I have a tangible objects list. I have 161 reasons at the door. That's a completely free list on the website. The, there's the Meisner activities. There's the independent activities list, both separately. And together, it, it's there's the acting activities, which is over 1,100. And then there's the worksheets for actors. So there's quite a lot of different materials here. And now there's an updated um, emotions list. Now, what's so incredible about this is because you want to challenge yourself as an actor. Now, I've seen a lot of people work in acting. And again, there's a lot of reasons why people get cast in acting. And most of the people, the most major parts are usually cast outside of the casting office. And then they, they do the castings to be able to find the backups. But um, 
or the filler parts. That's the, the honest truth of the industry. But I know other people will disagree. There is definitely sometimes you can do the front office casting uh, or the casting calls. Sometimes you can be able to get a role. But if you are able to get a role, the casting director will ask you if they're very talented. They will say, listen, I would like to see you do this exact same scene in a different emotional range. That is exactly what happens. Now, I'm using these tinted glasses to be able to help me read today. I'm, I'm dyslexic. So the colored tint adds contrast. And that's also what directors use sometimes. Some directors, smart directors, use polarized or tinted glasses for contrast when they're directing and or uh, editing sometimes too. So this is very, very, very important. When you're in an audition and somebody says to you, oh, by the way, you know, the first emotion here is pensive. Right. The first emotion is pensive. So the casting director says, well, we like your audition. We like we like what you're doing. We like the inner exchange with everything. The chemistry is great between the two people. It's actually fantastic between the two people. I mean, that that would be fantastic. So what what would they like next? They would like to see a different emotional color. Right. They would like to see that if you can do the same material under a different emotional range. Now, that means that you have to, one, be able to have the talent to be able to self-activate your emotion. Self-activate your emotion. Now, I have plenty of materials that are absolutely on emotional preparation, how to do emotional preparation, how to self-activate your emotion. And now this is an expanded emotional list. Now, before we go any further, let's look at this. This is another activity. This is obviously, there's dyslexia on here. If you have, have an A and it turns around an A, it becomes an A, rotated letters, right? And you can see that if you have a B, it can become a P or a Q, or it can become uh, a B, can become a D. And this is the way to be able to see this because the letters rotate. Well, that's just, that's dyslexia. But the reality to this is that this is a fantastic, hard, at hard surface to be able to do drawings, sketches on, but you can also get that in the store. Now, the reason why I'm telling you, oh, the, by the way, there's a, there's a, you can see this here, but very cool. You can push the different brightness, which is incredible. You can put the glasses on there. You can see the different colors light up. It's great. Really cool. So let's get into this. I'm going to simply keep this short today. I, I'm feeling good today. Very good. And I want to make sure that we've got this whole thing down so that you know exactly why am I spending so much time spending time. And by the way, all the references are on this material. I'm doing everything above board. The activities list, the uh, nearly 1,200 different acting activities, but it's right now it's over 1,100. It, it is all written completely by me, absolutely written by me, absolutely. Now, again, I have I fully, absolutely admit it. I've seen well over, over 30,000 acting exercises. I've seen every kind of thing you can imagine in an acting world. I, I'm so involved in acting that sometimes it would be, I would be like, oh yeah, you know, like uh, thinking things in life, I just didn't bother me. It was just all always focused about acting. And the reason is because the expansion of your humanity is what I care about. Okay, so so when I, when, when I'm looking at and talking about acting, I'm talking about whether or not you've got the courage to be able to expand your emotional range, right? And to be able to then work with a different expansion. Now, we all have that courage. It's just whether or not you've got the roadmap to be able to achieve it. And this is the reason why it's so, so sensible to be able to work with these emotions. So, um, all right, so let's, let's get into this. Let me have one sip of coffee. Okay, now look, I've got the first uh, emotion here as pensive, pensive, right? Pensive. Now, what is pensive? Pensive is something that, um, well, it can happen for several different reasons. That's true. But it can. what we're looking to do is not having any kind of effects of, of outside uh, influences. We're not looking to take a whole bunch of... Um, uh, legal or not legal um, uh, substances to be able to get our emotions. That's not what I advise. That's not what I'm about myself, right? We're looking to be able to see if we can have our own talent of emotion, 
our own talent of self-activated emotion. Now, I know you do. I know you've got the ability to do this. So when we're looking at pensive, pensive is the emotional quality, right, that you want to tap into that gives you kind of like a hesitancy before you do something. Like maybe um, you, you have an important decision. And the decision is something that's just rather important, right? It's an important decision. So you, you have this pensiveness about that decision. Now, a good writer, a good, 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 good writer will look at that and go, you know what? That's smart. And a good actor will look at the good writing and they'll look and say, you know what? This scene has an added emotional life of, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Uh, I've got to uh, change this slide here. All right, now we're, now we uh, yeah, use expanded emotions to expand your talent. There it is. So it's the emotions list for actors. That's the, the slide I should have on the, the computer thing. All right, so this is key because we're looking to be able to add emotional current, right? Emotional life. We're looking to be able to add inner life, some people call it, right? Now, back in the day in, in New York and in the UK, and also in England and in the colony of England, including in California, which, by the way, has incredible, incredible ties to the colonies of England, the colonies and, and the birthplaces of all that. Uh, there's incredible histories to it. But the reality to all this absolutely also is that you want to be able to self-activate that emotion. Now, you self-activate this emotion. So you've got this stream of Consciousness, you got this is inner life, right, flowing through you. And this is what it was called back. In, you want to get the inner life. And then, you know, then later it became very popularized as emotional preparation, which is fine. Call it whatever you'd like. Call it emotion. But it's activated emotion. So I am adamant that you want to be able to be very, very clear with yourself that you want to be able to activate your emotion. So the reason for this list is to be able to expand your talent. Okay, we got that, right? So let's say you've got a scene and the scene's really maybe not written that well, or maybe the writer sort of knew it's their third or fourth project. And instead of, of going into the scene and just you know doing the scene, maybe you wanna add a little bit of pensiveness to the scene. There's a, some indecision, right? And pensiveness is a specific type of indecision. So this is why, you know, indecision's on this list, and so is pensiveness. But it's very, very specific emotional current. All right, we're going to do one more example, and then we're going to dive into how to be able to work with this list even further, because this is really, really vital. All right, we've got, um, let me pick one here, um, angst. Angst is a different type of pensiveness. Angst, anxiety, right? It, it, pensiveness could be excitement in, in a pensive, uh, it could be, uh, trying to make a decision on which um, uh, plane ticket to buy, which vacation to go on. And you're very pensive because it's such an important decision. It could be all kinds of things like that. So let's look at this. Um, let's go into, now I'm going to read a couple. Uh, there's driven appreciation, overwhelming another. That's interesting. Grief. That's an, another one. Uh, it's sad. Very sad. Uh, relief. There's vitalized, aversive, humongous. You're feeling humongous. Now, humongous is different than egotistical. Now, an egotist, now, there, there used to be this thing um, that became uh, known in Hollywood with some of the social workers that arrest a lot of the actors. Um, there, um, this thing called grandiosity. They, they took the old Hollywood um, uh, one that's, um, that I just said, and then, then they called it um, humongous, right? They took the humongous thing and then they called it grandiosity and then you know this is a whole thing that's still yet to come out uh, fully public but that's fine it's we can still talk about it because it, we're not mentioning anything that we can't talk about so anyway so we're we're working through this now um could be prosperous agitating emptied emptied restored arrogant arrogant that's a totally different emotion complicated you're feeling complicated see complicated is different than pensive um hovering you're hovering. You're deprived. That's that's one. Uh, you're feeling deprived. Um, okay, so let's look at the example that I actually have on the sheet. Now, it's heavy-hearted. Now, heavy-hearted, let's say you have a really great experience, right? And you really like a person, whatever, right? Or, but, you know, you're honest about it, and you're, and you're, you're even keel about it, but you're still feeling heavy-hearted. And now that might be one that um, 
you could tap in to a heavy heartedness, right? A heavy heartedness. Now it might be that somebody's uh, passed away and it would be a type of grief that has heavy heartedness. It could be that you have to move towns and you've got a heavy heart or your, uh, uh, I think it's called uh, fairway, um, F-E-R-W-E-H. It's, it's a type of, of, of dramatic um, uh, homesickness. Um, there's also just a normal homesickness. Um, and, and there's all kinds of, of options here, but let's look at this exact, exact one. So we've got the emotional shade, right? The emotional current. And we're going to look at heavy hearted. Now, huh? so we're going to try and first see whether or not we can tap into any kind of recollection memory that we might have ourselves. Now, the first thing I want to do is whether or not you can write down on a separate piece of paper or or in your activations journal. Now, your activations journal is a uh, journal that, um, well, I've developed this thing called the activations journal. And, and, and this is something that I'm encouraging people to do. But you can do this on your own blank sheets or whatever, right? Uh, in your notebooks, acting notebooks. And you write down the, the actual emotional range, heavy hearted. Okay. Now you might want to first, if you're doing this towards a scene, you might want to um, brainstorm how and what type of heavy heartedness would fit into the scene. Okay. So we know the emotional range and we know that it fits the material. That's number one. Now, the second thing we want to do is we want to look and write down two to five personal experiences if we if we can personal experiences two to five now they might be extremely small personal experiences they might be very large personal experiences we want to write those down in bullet point okay first it within that specific emotional range that we know is going to fit the scene now we're not going to emotionally prepare on the scene itself we don't want to blindsight ourselves into acting Right. And I've said this before and I'll say it again because it's a fantastic, fantastic original note of mine. This one, this thing I'm about to say. You want to be able to act. I can't remember what it was. Darn. Um, but it, it, it's in my last video. I think I, I said it. But you want to be able to activate your own experience. So you self-activate your own experience. You, you write down personal experiences. Then you write down one to three imaginary experiences of what you would feel like if you had that actually experience to you and write down an imaginary experience in bullet points, right? Just or outline. Then you write down one to three experiences uh, that you've witnessed or seen that has that experience of watching somebody else have heavy heartedness. Maybe they're an exchange student. They fell um, into some sort of relationship with somebody and they're heavy hearted because they have to move down. Simple, right? I mean, they're not like, they're not devastated. They're just heavy hearted. There's a heavy heartedness about it. There's a balanced thing about heavy heartedness, right? Now you might do a very balanced, heavy heartedness, emotional preparation. And then the director might come and say that they want it more extreme. Then you make an adjustment, right? But the reality or more intense, but the reality is you, you make that adjustment based on those requests, but you're looking at this and you're saying, can you actually activate some kind of real stimulus in yourself? Now, what would out of those three main ways to be able to do your emotional preparations, what activates you the most? What do you feel the fullest about? Now, I've got this, this video um, that's on emotional meditation technique. Now, it's not quackery. It's actually quite, quite significant because the thing about it is that you do an emotional preparation. But the thing about emotional preparation is that there's a part that's before or part of some people do uh, meditational quality, and they, they can't separate meditation from the preparation. Preparation is getting ready to be able to get the part active 
and to be able to do the entire process from A to Z and to be able to get yourself ready to be able to have an active emotion. And most people get prepared with this emotion and they get everything ready so it's, it's logical to them. They, they logically understand it, but they don't have the emotion activated. They forget to activate the emotion. And this is why I say, listen, it's more important to be able to have an, an emotional activation than it is to be able to have an emotional preparation. Because then at least you're alive as an actor. But emotional meditation is the ability to internally expand that emotional range within yourself. Now, this is a terrible example, but I have to tell you, because it's honest. You might get into a part where all of a sudden you're told that you have to expand your emotional hatred for some reason or your regret, or whatever emotion, and it might not be a good one, right, in life to live out at all. And you would be able to meditate and expand that emotional range to be able to have that in you. And your test within the emotional meditation is to be able to invite that emotion in, expand and feel that emotion expand in you, and then breathe out fully that emotion. So you don't have any acting baggage, which is another fantastic video, fantastic concept, the concept of e acting baggage. You want your emotional experiences in, in acting to be active and alive and all oh, across the board. And, uh, and it's called running the gamut, right? You want to be able to run the gamut emotionally. And right now, now, activating an emotional range is how you're able to start or prepare for a scene's emotional intent, right? Now, you might be able to, through interaction, be able to achieve 15, 20, 85 different emotions. Hopefully you do, right? A lot of people, they're only able to get five or eight or six or three. But the reality of this is absolutely critical. It is incredibly, incredibly important. So looking at this is you want to be able to find for sure, and especially if you're in an, in an acting audition circumstance, you want to be able to make sure that you have an activated inner life, right? Or an activated below the chin. Some people call it below the chin. You want to make sure that it, you're activated. So you've got something alive in you. You've got something awakened inside emotionally. Now, there is a thing that I have uh, written out, developed called um, the actor's emotions triangle. All right, so the emotions triangle starts with a really great idea. Well, there's ideas. There's just normal ideas. Then you've got the, um, the great ideas. And then underneath great ideas, you have um, some, you know, um, feelings and inclinations, I call them, inclinations. Then you've got them when they turn into feelings. And then below feelings, you've got strong feelings. Now, below strong feelings, you have emotion. And then below emotion, you can go even deep emotion. So if you're working from a, an activated feeling, that's totally, absolutely different than working from an activated emotion. Okay? It is two absolutely different things. Let me write that down. It is totally different than working from an activated emotion. Okay, now this is critical, critical. I can't tell you how many thousands, I'm, I'm not joking, thousands of times I have seen students in classes Absolutely, whether I'm teaching or whether I'm seeing and, and learning from a plethora of 70 plus teachers over the last 20 plus 30, whatever, whatever, a long time, right? Uh, the reality of this, plus, 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 is the reality of all this is that whether or um, a director or scenes or whatever, right? The reality is that if, if you're working from an activated feeling, it's not going to stay in you the same way as if you're working from an activated emotion. All right. So we've got this settled. But the thing is, is that if we can get an activated emotion of 
heart, heavy heartedness, then we'll have something that we can internally adjust. And the director will know that in the auditions and we'll be going to be completely different. It's going to be absolutely different experience. And each acting experience will end up being a different, unique experience. I call it the real time acting experience when you've got real activated emotion, which is critical, critical, absolutely critical. So all of this is great, great to be able to help you. And also, I like it because it helps me understand stuff. And that is something I actually like a lot because I study this stuff. It's nice. It's fun, right? It expands my humanity by being able to study. So we're deciding on what experience that will activate us the most. Then we write down one, two, or three of those. Now, why do we write down one, two, or three different uh, activated emotions that we know that might be able to activate us? Now, if an imaginary circumstance that we can daydream about activates ourselves more then use it then work with it then that's perfect it's great then this is exactly what you want to work with because that's the one that's going to be able to activate our emotions the most right and when i say the most the appropriate amount of way so we're we're then we're activated our emotions not to be able to go into the scene and bully the other actor we're activating ourselves subtly and also not so subtly we're, we're self-activated emotion to be able to be under the influence of the emotion, under the influence of the emotional range. And we'll know that we're under the influence of the emotional range when we receive the other actor and all of a sudden things happen on our work. All of a sudden, see, one plus one in acting does not equal two. That's not the way it works in acting. In acting, there's a thing called acting synergy, synergistics, or syner synergiality, or whatever, in whatever language. The reality is, is you want to be able to study the synergy. Emotion is the synergy. See, if I'm directing, whenever I'm directing, I work with one actor to be able to get their activated emotion in a specific range, and I tr get them to be able to know that they've got one to three different emotions to be able to work with. And they know that they can, if the first emotion doesn't work, then they work with the second uh, emotional uh, uh, experience, right? The emotional activation. If that doesn't work for them in that moment, then they go to the third. This is exactly what you want to do. Now, I'm talking about the big, 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 big names, which, by the way, I've seen plenty of them, plenty. And actually training, actually Fantastic. Well, a lot of times they're failing in acting classes, trying to learn the technique. And I don't fail for the, blame them for that. That's just part of learning. Um, now, I do blame people that think that, that acting is only conviction, where they try and push other people. That's not what it is. What we want to do is we want to find activated emotion. So I work with one actor to be able to get that done. Then I go to the other actor. I get the other thing done. Now, what I'm doing is I'm setting up the synergistic scene. So one plus one doesn't equal two. One plus one hopefully equals four, five, six. There's a synergistic component to the acting. Now, I don't know anybody that's ever said that before. And I've watched 70 plus teachers in, in crazy amounts of, of, of acting work. And I'm the only one that's ever said that that I know of. So and I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that this is my opinion. Now, now, because it's my opinion, it may not apply to you. But it probably does. So... Now, the, what you want to do is you want to put all of that activated emotion into the knock. And then as soon as the interaction happens, the first thing you want to do is you want to listen and you want to receive. Now, I hope hopefully you receive before you listen. And listening sometimes is uh, limited. It's a limited uh, action of being. People just keep, especially in acting, they just listen to try and get the cue. Well, we're not here to listen to the cue. We're trying to receive the other actor. So we're activated ourselves and we're trusting that we're trying to be able to dive into an imaginary world, imaginary circumstance. Some people call it imaginary circumstances, right? Um, well, this is great. Now, there's different names for all of these different things in different countries, different languages, all of this. But the reality is we want to be able to get that synergistic real-time acting experience. 
That's the experience that you're going to be able to put yourself in and not know what the full outcome is going to be as the actor. You understand? This is why it's vital and why it's so important. This is why this emotions list is so important. This is why I'm encouraging you to uh, figure out how to contact me and uh, see, how, just figure out how to contact me. I've got it out there places. And then you can figure this out and then join me and we'll, we'll work just for fun to see what you can do with what I just suggested. Why not? It's just acting practice. Now, if you've got copyright free material that you can bring, and, uh, we'll work together online. No problem. I don't care who I'm working with. As long as they're open, receptive, it's all, that's just it. I'm just interested in human growth. So the reality to all this is just absolutely key. It is incredibly, incredibly important that you're able to remain open enough to be able to have an expanded experience. Okay, so listen, I think that uh, 30 minutes on this topic is a short dissertation on the whole meaning of 1200 emotion words. But well, I don't care. I mean, it, it, it should help you to listen to this. But I don't want to go too long. I really do um, appreciate all of the different stuff. And I think that what's incredible about this is that you know the stuff has worked in your acting when you know that you can do a different emotional range, you can activate your different emotional range for the same improvisation setup, uh, which by the way, um, check the reasons to come to the door list, 161 reasons is fantastic. There's a lot of great things on it. And, and you know, again, you know, I'm coming from a place of wanting to see human growth in the artistic creative field. Okay, so I'm not coming from a place of ego. I don't have time for ego, my own ego or anyone else's. What I'm interested in is, is whether or not people can work with different ranges of talent. And what they'll find is they'll find that, that the small amount of roles that are actually out there in the industry, I mean, there is some stuff, I mean, it should be called uh, uh, creative um, tyranny. Um, where there's some places where they shut down the entire states in different countries. And, and, and they literally wanted to, and they did, and they made sure that you couldn't do any filming project in enormous amounts of areas of, of locations, um, unless you had a written approval with paid um, uh, deal with the uh, unions and agencies. Now, if this is the way that the industry is going to end up going, we're going to not have any freedoms at all. So I'm absolutely encouraging you to be able to work with different emotions because it is a way for you to be able to expand your creative freedom, right? And whether it's in a limited form of an acting exercise or not, it is literally you're practicing your own free will by being able to work with the different emotions. So this is how important it is. It's just kind of actually quite important. So listen, I'm going to wrap this up uh, very quickly. Um, there is some links to some activities down in the description box. Um, obviously, check out the materials. Check out the website, um, uh, the books. There is uh, PDF documents, flip books, all kinds of stuff to be able to help you expand your talent. There's some of the glasses. Uh, is a cool nightclub. Uh, and um, uh, absolutely, you know, uh, work with this. And uh, again, these are very, 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 very important to be able to work in a way where you're working with the freedom, the working with your own freedom. And, um, you know, nothing could be funner, I don't think than being able to take a scene like, we'll do some examples, but we'll, we'll, well, well we are, I already have, but um, it's, it's really, really good. So anyway, let's wrap this up. Um, thank you very much. I'm going to um, play this out intro just as, as a uh, thing here, if I can find it. And uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'll say bye one. Hi, 
I'm inviting you to actually join me live on the internet. And uh, if you would, you can bring your own emotional preparation. We can work on emotional preparation together and we can really hone down and help build out that talent with inside of you. Now, even if all it is, is you wanna just bring an emotional preparation, do a spoon river, I don't mind. Come, join us and absolutely practice the talent of your own acting. Okay, I want to say a proper adieu. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for sharing uh, any of this, uh, talking about any of the topics. You know, literally, the, the need and the desire for artists to expand their emotion and their talent is something that is incredibly important in society because it is the thing that actually does actually keep society grounded. And um, that's an important note. So uh, listen, thank you very much. And uh, feel free to contact me for whatever it is. And just be very direct about it. Don't waste my time. I won't waste yours. And uh, thank you very much. Okay. I very much appreciate it. Thank you so much.